Hello everyone and welcome to the Living Coast in your living room. My name is Ashley and I'm one of our educators here at the Living Coast Discovery Center. Now thank you for joining us. We love to bring our different animal interactions and up close encounters with you every day here on Facebook at 11 a.m. from Monday to Friday. Now today we're going to be learning about turtles and tortoises. Often people think these animals are the same and they use these two words interchangeably. That is not going to actually be the case. These are two very different animals. They are related, but they are actually going to be different. Now, all turtles and tortoises are reptiles, and they are all related, but they do have some very, really big differences that set them apart. But they also have some things that keep them in common as well. So we're going to go over some of those different characteristics today. Now today, we get an opportunity to be out front in front of our turtle lagoon exhibit. So we get to see our green sea turtles swimming around. So they'll actually come and by and grace us with their presence and then swim away again. And then we also have Darwin, one of our younger desert tortoises joining us today. Now, we're gonna go ahead and get started with some of those things that keep these two animals related and similar in different ways. One of the first things people always think about when they think of turtles and tortoises being similar is going to be their shells. Now I'll use it on this one here. This is one of our desert tortoise puppets, which makes it really easy for us to check them out. Now both turtles and tortoises are going to have shells to help shape their bodies. Now on the top part, you see this part of the shell. This is called the carapace. The carapace is going to be made up of multiple bones and scoots on the top side of it, and that's going to be the shell itself. Then the belly side, the ventral side, that's going to be the plastra. So both these two parts of the shell work together to complete the whole shell to protect turtles and tortoises. In fact, inside of these turtle shells, you actually are going to be finding their bones as well as their spinal column and their ribs are going to be fused to their shell. How many of you have heard that you can take a turtle or a tortoise out of their shell and that they'll grow a new one? Yeah, unfortunately that is not the case, but a lot of people think it is true. So here I have a tortoise shell and if I flip it over here, you can actually see inside of it, that's where you would find the spinal column as well as the ribs. So let me get a closer view for you guys. Might be a little hard to see with the sun coming in right now. Let me try to turn it like this. You can see here we have the spinal column and then the ribs fusing throughout. So the shell is made up of bones. It does have different bones inside of it to help give that structure. And they can feel things with their shells as well. So it's not going to be something that can be removed easily. Now all turtles are going to have that shell, same with tortoises, but between turtles and tortoises their shells are going to be different. So you can see here on Darwin over there, he's got a more dome-shaped shell. Tortoises generally have a higher dome shape to their carapace. And this is so that way they're able to pull their limbs inside of their shell if they get scared. Tortoises are able to pull their limbs, both their hind legs and their front legs, including their head, into their shell the farthest out of all of these different animals. Now, usually when they do this on their front legs, they have really hard scales that are gonna protect them. So they'll pull in and use those front legs to protect their bodies so that things are not gonna be able to get them out and eat them. Now a sea turtle, as you can see right here, there's no space for them to do that. Sea turtles are not able to pull into their bodies. And that is because they need to be able to swim. In order to swim through the water column as quickly as they can and reduce drag, they have to make sure that there are no holes in their shells. This turtle came over to us at just the perfect time to be able to point that out. So you can see all of the limbs are fused to the shell and there is no extra space so that these tur sea turtles are not able to pull their limbs into their body, their shells. Now freshwater turtles can do it a little bit, but they have the same thing with a sea turtle does where they live in water. So they need to be able to swim. So they are unable to pull their limbs all the way into their shells like a desert tortoise can. They can pull them in just a little bit, but not enough to be able to fully pull themselves in. A freshwater turtle also has different flippers or front limbs than a sea turtle and a tortoise. As sea turtles have those flippers adapted for swimming, 
Tortoises have long legs with claws on the end so that they can walk and dig burrows, while freshwater turtles actually have webbing between their toes on their feet, and that's to help them swim through the water column as fast as they can. But they also have claws on the end so that they can climb up onto branches and into the muddy shorelines as well. So even though these animals are related, there are quite a few differences between them all, but they're still going to have some of those common characteristics, including that they are all reptiles. They have those shells. Their shells are made out of scoots, which are modified scales, and their bones. So it is very important that if you ever go anywhere and you go visiting other countries or other places and somebody offers you a tortoise shell item that you tell them no. Unfortunately, people think that if you remove a sea turtle shell or a tortoise shell, or even a freshwater turtle shell, that they can grow new ones. And that is not the case as we discussed earlier. A lot of people think these make great souvenirs, but they're actually really dangerous for our turtles and our tortoises. So we need to do our part, make sure we protect them by not participating by buying any of those items. Now we hope you've learned a lot about turtles and tortoises today as you're getting a chance to see two of these different animals here, and getting a chance to check them out. And if you have any questions for us, go ahead and leave those in the comments. We'd be happy to answer those for you. And we hope to see you again next time on The Living Coast in your living room. See you later.